It is no secret that the war between Russia and Ukraine has affected the whole world in one way or another. A lot of companies and businesses are getting severely affected, and Tesla is undoubtedly amongst the affected lot in this episode. We are going to be exploring the reason for this and how it affects the automobile industry. Stay tuned to find out. Tech entrepreneur Elon Musk said recently that U.S. electric car maker and his rocket company SpaceX are facing significant inflationary pressures in raw materials and logistics. CEO Elon Musk also retweeted an article that the Ukraine-Russia conflict has sent commodity prices to their highest levels since 2008. Russian invasions of Ukraine and Western sanctions, including U.S. sanctions on Russian oil imports, are driving up the prices of energy and other key commodities such as wheat, fertilizers, and metals. This invasion also raised the prices of metals used in cars, from aluminum and bodywork to palladium and catalytic converters to high-grade nickel and electric vehicle batteries, and is likely to set drivers up for bills. While the metals have not yet been a target of Western sanctions, some shippers and auto parts suppliers shy away from Russian goods putting more pressure on car makers already grappling with chip shortages and high energy prices. SpaceX's Starlink satellite broadband service was activated in Ukraine after Kiev's digital minister Mikhailo Fedorov urged Musk to provide the embattled country with stations in the days after it was invaded by neighboring Russia. The service operates a group of more than 2,000 satellites intended to provide internet access across the planet. Tesla's shares, which closed 5% lower at $795.35, have lost about 25% year-to-date. The electric car maker recently raised the prices of its U.S. Model Y SUVs and Model 3 long-range sedans by $1,000, and some China-made Model 3 and Model Y vehicles by 10,000 won, $1,582.40. In addition, the electric vehicle maker, Rivian Automotive Inc., said supply chain issues could lead to a halving of its planned production, citing rising raw material prices and supply chain constraints. Nickel prices rocketed 90% to all-time highs, and aluminum jumped to a record above $4,000 a ton as fears of major disruptions to supplies due to financial sanctions on Russia fueled a buying frenzy. Russia supplies the world with around 10% of its nickel needs, mainly for stainless steel and electric vehicle batteries, and accounts for about 6% of global production of aluminum, used in the transport, construction, and packaging industries. Russia's largest miner, Nor Nickel, produces around 20% of the world's supplies of high-purity Class 1 nickel, which is used in EV batteries. According to Benchmark Mineral Intelligence, Russia is also a large provider of aluminum used in batteries. Rising EV prices, marked by hikes over the past year by Tesla and startup Rivian Automotive, matter because mainstream consumers are not going to pay a massive premium for technology that many do not yet fully embrace. The average EV sold for almost $63,000 in January in the United States, about 35% higher than the overall industry average for all vehicles of just over $46,000, according to research firm Cox Automotive. While consumers worry less about being stranded without power on the roadside, the price remains a major concern, according to a Cox survey. EVs made up about 9% of total global vehicle sales last year, according to the International Energy Agency, and consulting firm Alex Partners expects the share to hit about 24% by 2030. More than half of consumers are not prepared to pay $500 extra up front to buy an EV, despite lower operating costs, according to a 2021 study by OC&C Global Speedometer on consumers in the United States and other countries. That could put vehicle makers in a bind if they want to attract mainstream buyers rather than luxury customers to whom they currently cater. Tesla raised the price for its least expensive Model 3 sedan by 18% to $44,990 since December 2020, as supply chain woes weigh. Musk also said in January that Tesla is not developing a $25,000 car, he promised during 2020 Battery Day, saying that there are too many things on his plate. Some U.S. dealers have taken advantage of vehicle shortages to charge more for EVs, sparking warnings from automakers like Hyundai and Ford. Rivian tried last week to push through a 20% price increase on its electric pickups and SUVs to offset higher parts costs, but retreated for those who had already placed orders when faced with a backlash that included possible sale cancellations. Another EV startup, Lucid Group Inc., has not raised prices yet, but Chief Financial Officer Sherry Howe said in February the company was definitely setting price to offset higher supply chain costs. In China, lithium price hikes have pressured the makers of such entry-level models as Great Wall's Aura EV and Wuling Hong Guang's Mini EV because they have less room to push through a higher price tag, investors said. Battery makers typically have long-term contracts with automakers, under which prices rise to reflect the increased cost of key raw materials such as lithium, nickel, and cobalt, industry officials said. LG Energy Solution, a supplier to Tesla and General Motors company, said raw materials account for 70 or 80 percent of the cost of its batteries. Benchmark Mineral Intelligence said battery producers started increasing lithium-ion cell prices late last year, in response to the higher raw material prices they had seen throughout 2021. Elon Musk and Tesla have big trouble in India. Tesla has a well-established presence in China, the largest electric car market in the world, one of China's neighbors in India, with a population of over a billion and a growing tech industry. It'll be a great win for Tesla to enter their market and maybe dominate. 
However, none of that is going to happen very soon, as Elon Musk has denied to import Tesla to India. Why? We're about to find out. According to Bloomberg, the Indian government has turned down Elon Musk's electric vehicle company Tesla's request for tax discounts to import electric automobiles, claiming that rules already enable bringing in partially built vehicles and assembling them locally at a cheaper fee. As a result, no Tesla subsidiary will be permitted to import vehicles into India. The major barrier for Tesla in entering the Indian market, according to industry experts, is the import charge. According to the article, the Tesla Model 3 may remain an inexpensive model in the United States, but with import charges, it would become unaffordable in the Indian market, with a price tag of roughly RS60 lakh, or $80,000. Musk also stated that India's taxes are among the highest in the world, and he wants them reduced before entering the Indian EV market. Many Indian automakers were outraged by this, believing that it would hinder investment in domestic manufacturing. India's automotive sector has gone a long way since the 1950s, when yearly car production was capped at 40,000 units. Hindustan Motors, Premier Automobiles, and Standard Motors were the only three manufacturers in the early years of production. In the early phases of the automotive industry, most expertise was gained by trial and error. Over the decades, the country has grown to become a significant player in the global automobile sector, ranking fourth in Asia-Pacific in 2020. Automotive is one of the most important industries of the Indian economy, and it serves as a barometer for the country's current situation to a large extent. In both 2012 and 2019, a high drop in commercial vehicle sales signaled impending economic issues, while a steep surge in passenger vehicle and two-wheeler sales signaled favorable economic news in 2010. The industry among domestic manufacturers is currently dominated by the likes of Mahindra, Maruti, and Tata, who are just starting to produce attractive options for the average middle-class Indian buyer, who has to contend with the choice between a locally designed and built car or a foreign one, usually from Suzuki or Toyota. While Indian designed and built cars are starting to show real promise as attractive options, they are yet to be widely popular in significant markets outside of India. Therefore, Mahindra, Maruti, and Tata's combined politically linked voices are listened to by the Indian government. These companies cannot afford to lose their status, especially at such a crucial time. Furthermore, the Indian government has always followed a strict policy of joint ventures, and the building of local factories are prerequisites before allowing foreign companies to sell. This was done to make technology transfer easier. The first batch of joint ventures, including Maruti Suzuki, Hero Honda, Escort Yamaha, TVS Suzuki, and others, saw significant knowledge transfer from foreign partners to Indian firms. They taught lean management, 5S, process control and process management, among other topics that were unfamiliar to Indian business at the time. They also instructed its component suppliers to harmonize their processes. The OEMs also assisted Indian component producers in forming joint ventures with global firms to obtain technology and gain a better understanding of the process to produce the best possible parts. The Indian industry capitalized on the circumstance to the fullest extent possible. It was the motorbike industry specifically though. Most of the joint venture companies we mentioned above sold motorcycles. The motorcycle market completely dwarfs the car market in India. India's population is one of the main reasons motorcycles are so popular there. India is the world's second most populated country and is rapidly approaching number one. India has a population of about 1 billion people, and thousands more are being born. So with a population of this size, and an area roughly three times smaller than the United States, India cannot afford to provide automobiles to all citizens. The average middle class salary in India is around $500. With such a low salary, few people can afford to buy a car that costs even $6,000. Except for the Tata Nano, the cheapest automobile in India starts at $5,000. Of course, the Indian government is being heavy handed, arguably to benefit domestic EV manufacturers in the long run. But the writing is on the wall for the foreign car market in India. There has to be a change in the way they do things. Now that you've watched this video, let us know what you think by leaving a comment in the section below. Thanks.